Hi, I'm James. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use diagnostic fault injection as a tool for gaining coverage on AutoSAR components which are making calls into basic software. The model I'm going to show you today is an example of ours. I can find that by opening the Simulink Start page, click on the Examples tab, and find the AutoSAR block set examples. We have a fair few, so I'll open them all in the documentation. I can scroll down the list to the basic software examples. And this is the one that I'm looking for. This is a throttle position monitor component. It takes input from a primary and secondary sensor. There are four calls into basic software, two for each sensor, to see if each sensor is stuck too high or stuck too low. If the primary sensor is failing, we switch to the secondary sensor. If both of the sensors are failing, we use another caller to report a more general failure for this component, and the component itself outputs the default value. In order to check the coverage of this component, I can use the Coverage Analyzer app. I can enable the tool and simulate to analyze the coverage. We can see here we don't have full coverage yet. This is due to the basic software callers, which currently output default values. This is my test harness model. The component we looked at before is in the top right. I have an AutoSAR Diagnostic Service component block, which shows those five basic software client ports, which I've associated with unique IDs. We can focus on the first one. Here, I have a DEM status override block, also provided by AutoSAR block set, which is associated with that same event ID. I'm using it to override the test failed bit with the value provided by an input port signal. This is the one which the get failed caller block in the component model is monitoring. I also have control over the other bits of the UDS status by if I want to enhance my simulation in future. I've set up some test conditions to permute through the true and false values for these four callers to gain full coverage. Now I can run coverage analysis again with these permuted conditions and I can see I have full coverage of my component. So that's the review of how to gain coverage on an AutoSAR component which is making basic software calls by overriding bits of the EDS status by. You can find more information about this example in our documentation. Thanks for listening.